I made some questions in the tutorial. Oh, okay, that's more than I expected. <laughs> okay, uh, did you encounter any big problem? So you can discuss it on KTH, KTH Social, and if you don't have the answer, we can discuss and uh, find one. Uh, if you don't have seen the tutorial, it's on KTH Social, so you search for uh, LaTeX ICT and you will find it. And um, please try to do it. It's, uh, it's like every language. If you practice, you will learn uh, quick, quicker and faster. So for today, uh, it's a, uh, so here is the plan. I, I don't think if you can, is it is OK with the mic or? That's not, that's last time it was good. Okay, so if ever it's not uh, enough, you, you ask me, you stop me and you say, okay, I don't uh, hear anything you say. So um, uh, last time we see, we have three parts in this course. The first part was about basics, was what we did last time, and today it's about mathematics. But uh, before starting with mathematics, uh, we have an, an important thing to see. It's bibliography, it's how to, to print uh, your references, um, external references, references, I mean. Then we'll go through uh, mathematics and then a uh, part which is uh, a bit in mathematics and, uh, but can be used outside, it's about arrays. So first, about bibliography. Uh, bibli bibliography is uh, well, um, um, I mean, well implemented in LaTeX, but it uses an, exter an external uh, tool. So first, what do you need uh, to produce your bibliography with LaTeX? First, we'll need a database, just a, te a text database, so you have a file, uh, we'll see this the syntax later, um, and you have entries in it. Uh, you will need the tool called BibTeX, which is included in every distribution of LaTeX, because it's part of it. Um, then inside your source file, the, your LaTeX source file, you will put site to, uh, I mean, cite uh, an author or a book. And uh, then you will put a bibliography command that will tell uh, uh, LaTeX to produce uh, your old bibliography here, your old references. Uh, in fact, where the site command is, you will only see uh, reference which, which can be a number, uh, a an abbreviation of the name, uh, plus the year, or things like that. We'll see after. Um, the compilation process is a little more complicated, but it can be well understood. I mean, uh, first you have to run LaTeX to know which is cited or not, because uh, you can have a big, big, big database, but only cite three references inside, and you don't want that long bibliography at the end of your document because all uh, is not needed. So first you, you, you run LaTeX to know which, uh, um, which author is uh, cited, and then BibTeX to produce uh, the bibliography, and then again LaTeX to output the bibliography uh, in your PDF. And once again, because you can have problem with references if you remember uh, references need uh, to uh, compilation to work properly. Uh, so this is just an example. Uh, it's a, a reference of this uh, course. Um, so we are, the syntax is not quite difficult. We are first um, an, an entry type. So every entry starts with uh, this at character, and then the name of the type. Uh, here it's a book. We'll see later uh, more uh, types. And between uh, braces, you are then uh, first a key. The key we will use to cite the document. So it's it's just internal. It's for you. Uh, so use uh, something uh, that uh, reminds you about the book or the nickname you gave to to the book or something like that. So here, just the last name of the author and uh, the sub main subject of the book. Um, then you have 
a set of uh, key equals field. So, for example, we set the author name. Uh, so here the key, then an equal, and then be between braces you put uh, the name of the author. Uh, just notice how uh, yes, it's there. Uh, how the the BibTeX um, tool is uh, is clever. You have put a name, comma, first name and middle name, okay, and then uh, BibTeX produced in this style because you can change the style. It produces first name, middle name, and last name. If you have uh, multiple names, you can separate them with and, with the word and, and it would produce a list of author with commas and then end at the end. Or if you're in a short way, this classical et al, which means uh, and others uh, in bibliographies. So um, you can also use uh, comments inside uh, the the database. So here we'll use the tech comment to produce uh, this uh, logo type, this tech logo type, uh, because it's part of the name of the book. Um, notice also for the month we didn't have used braces. Why? In fact, braces protect the content to be sure that what is output is exactly um, what is output is exactly what you meant. But when you don't use it, it can be an abbreviation of something else. Here, uh, gen is uh, an, an abbreviation, a uh, three letters abbreviation for January, and you have uh, one for each month, which allows um, different definitions uh, inside different styles. For example, you can have an abbreviated January or a long January, uh, or maybe just a number if uh, this is the way um, your, your printer wants it, want it. OK, so if you put it in braces, you see it just output gen and not January with a, a capital J. OK, the last uh, comma is uh, optional, but I strongly recommend you to keep it because when you will add a field, you will always forget to add the comma you were removing before. Uh, so it's always better when it's optional to keep it. So avoid, you know, headache about why it doesn't work. Okay, now how to cite this reference? So we have this written in a bib file, this uh, at uh, book, uh, etc. And uh, then in the text we have two comments we can use, which is cite. So cite, and then you have the keys. I was uh, talking about the Kenneth, Kenneth Tech, this little word you use a, as a reminder. You can put multiple references. And uh, the no cite is important. This is when you have a general reference. You never cite, but with, which is a kind of basis of your work. So your work can't exist without uh, this book, this article. But you don't need to cite ex uh, uh, ex explicitly a uh, part of the book or uh, anything about the book. It's just a basis, something which is important about the, your, your work. Uh, you may see there is an optional argument to text, so uh, under it you, are, you have the output uh, of uh, that. So, uh, for example, I cite, I cite Kenneth Tech. Here, I, I don't have the pointer I have last time, so uh, just here you see the site and in braces cannot take. It produces this little one in uh, square braces uh, here, but you can add text. This is the second site comment. Uh, you can add text, which is then produced after your uh, reference. This may be useful to cite uh, just a part of a book and don't add this part of book explicitly in your. Uh, um, bib file. Okay, that's clear. Let's see some type of entries you might encounter. So you have um, here, this is for an article. Um, you will see often that the, the type is written with the capitals, but it's not necessary, it's just optional. But 
this may be useful to proofread your bib file. So uh, this is an example for article. Uh, in red, you have mandatory fields. If you don't put it, you will uh, have, if not an error, uh, a warning, a big warning of LaTeX uh, telling you that uh, you have missed something because an article should com should come with these four fields. Others are optional. You can add any other field you want. You, you can invent one, um, but they will, they will never be used uh, in the output. Uh, why can it be useful? It can be useful just for you to have, for example, an abstract, just to keep in mind what, is, what's, what was the book about, or any comment you want. You can just put a, a key, a, a new field, and your comment or ideas. So you can cite a book, a full book. Here you have choice be between some field. For example, if you put the author, you, it's not necessary you put the editor because often you have uh, only one of them. Uh, not uh, that uh, editor is different from publisher. Uh, so <laughs> the editor is in fact someone who, who asks for the book or have, uh, a team to write the book. So uh, the publisher is the man who uh, pay for uh, making the book. Um, so it's not exactly the same. Okay, here uh, this can happen that uh, you you have uh, something that is not really a book, but it's printed and it's like a book. For example, um, uh, um, compendium or things like that. Um, not really book because they don't have. Uh, publisher, for example, uh, but they are seen as book. You may cite only part of book. I don't go through uh, each field. I think you can read uh, which one is mandatory or not. Uh, for pages, here's the important part. You have optional chapter or pages. For pages, um, you can put whatever you want. Often, we separate different pages with commas. And uh, when you have um, um, a sequence of pages, it's just the first one, two dash, you know, this, this will produce this end dash we, we talked about last time. And uh, the last one, it's two dash for the end dash. And this is always an end dash for um, a sequence of pages. For chapter, you can, you can put whatever you want. But here, for example, uh, 1.2 is not really a chapter. I mean, it's it's something like a section or things like that. So you can add in the type the, sec the section information and in the output it will tell you, okay, this is this part of book is of the type section, so it will output section 1.2, okay? So some others you, might, you may find. Uh, when you have a, a book uh, which is part of something longer, or the collection of books, and sometimes, so for example, the art of computer programming. I told you, uh, I talked to you about uh, last time, as uh, in fact uh, four books in just one collection, which is called a book, but it's not a book. Okay, so you may cite only one of these four parts, big parts of the book. Okay, then you have uh, for conference. Uh, this is more for um, manual tech report, uh, so uh, you'll see descriptions. Uh, places if you want to cite the work of uh, one of your colleagues or something like that. Um, and uh, unpublished, um, it's you will rarely use it, but it might happen that you have something that is not really published, but uh, that can be found something on, for example, on the internet or and you want to reference it. And you have miscellaneous, so please avoid it. <laughs> if you can, uh, I think there is plenty of types. You will find the one that shoots you, but if, don't, if you don't, uh, okay, we'll see later if you don't. Now, we have nothing about your, uh, URLs or uh, about the internet. If you find something, yes?
Yes. Yes. I was about to talk about it later, but <laughs> okay. Yes, you, you don't have to, to, to write all that, but it's important to know the syntax because sometimes you want to tweak a little uh, what uh, you found on the internet. Sometimes it's not exactly what you were looking for. Um, so, uh, for internet, the first solution is to use this miscellaneous uh, type. Uh, so, for example, uh, the um, LaTeX documentation is uh, mostly found on the web, so you can use this how published. Okay, this is not quite good because everything is up shape. You can't see uh, who published this, uh, wh who is the editor, or, s or things like that. Okay, so the second solution we m might use is to typeset the URL as a new URL. A new URL. So um, you can use this command URL that comes from the URL package or the EPRF package if you produce PDF. Just look the documentation of this uh, packages. Okay. But um, this is not exactly good. Mm. You can use now Bibliotech instead of Bibtech. Just th this is mostly the same syntax, but you have a NAT online type with a field uh, URL. So it's specifically for documents that are produced on the web or for websites. Um, you will see that there are mandatory fields like uh, in any other uh, um, uh, in any other type, an optional one. You just uh, Google the Bibliotech uh, documentation and you will find it. Um, you have a lot of new type. If you miss one, maybe uh, it's in Bibliotech. Um, you all uh, for bibliography, you have to use package. Most, most of the time you have to use package if you want to really change the style of your bibliography. Okay. But with Bibliotech, it's all inside. You just have to read the package documentation. It's all very well explained. Uh, better, you can um, just have citations for part of your work. For example, if you have 300 pages, you don't want to lose your reader by jumping to the very end of, the, of your work to find something. You may have uh, references just for one chapter, for example. Okay. This is very, very useful. Um, so you can sort, because you, you have seen that if you, have, uh, if you use your bibliography file, we, I, I don't show you here, but you will have the list of bibliography which are sorted in a certain way. They may be not sorted, I mean, they will be output, the way they are written in the bib uh, file, but they may be sorted by author, by year, by whatever you want, okay? So you might want to take a look at that if you want a very good bibliography. But the default one is okay also. And there is support for Unicode, which might be useful for some of you. This is fully compatible with BibTech bibliography. So if you build uh, first a BibTech bibliography, and then at the end of your project, you have two weeks, and you don't know what to do with your file, but you want to tweak a little your bibliography, maybe take a look at Bibliotech. It's not that uh, difficult. OK, just to sum up to how your file will look. So the left part is for uh, BibTech, the default one. So you have citations somewhere in your document. And at the very end, often, you put a bibli bibliography command with the name of uh, your bib file, OK? So you have a file uh, that have the extension point, uh, point, uh, dot .bib. And you don't uh, write the dot .bib, you just put the name of the file. Um, on the other hand, because of the sorting capabilities of Bibliotech, you have to tell at the very be beginning which file you will use for um, your um, bibliography. Y the citations are the same, but when you want the bibliography to be printed, you use print bibliography, uh, which can read among multiple bibliography files and then sort it in the way you want, or just print part of your bibliography, depending on 
what you put uh, there in uh, the square brackets, this is all the power of bibliotech. This is why you might want to switch from one to another. Okay, but you will find all uh, documentation uh, on this book. Uh, so the first one is very important. Uh, the second one is if you want to dig a little inside, yes. I forgot, yes, I uh, totally, I forgot it. <laughs> you also have to uh, put a bit style, uh, I think before the begin document, because then you find, you know, when you're using a uh, bit text, how, in which style you find the real person you're seeing. Uh, in in yes, in fact, uh, I, I forgot it. Uh, just here before this line, or anywhere before this line, uh, including in the preamble, you have to put a uh, bibliographical style comment. Uh, you will find it's all in the documentation of, uh, of uh, BibTech. This is the first file. So um, f first, you will use the plain style. So this is his name uh, by default. And if you want to uh, read more about uh, styles, it's all uh, explained here. Because this is a long litany, you know, I will not go through uh, it uh, now because I don't think you want me to um, tell you all about uh, BibTech, which can take hours, and we don't have this time. And mathematics are a bit more complicated than just output uh, bibliography. But this is important you, that you know. You don't have to uh, write your bibliography explicitly line by line, OK? You have some um, database, and this is output for you. Um, and the last one is about uh, bibliotech. So if you want to, to, to have a better bi bibliography, I strongly recommend you to use it. This, this is what I use to produce, uh, for example, this bibliography inside the slide, because my slides are produced with latex. So, okay, you will not have the little document and the colors in, your, in a real document. This is just for slides, but this is the idea. Okay, now about mathematics, which is section two and not three. Okay. Um, so first, the syntax is uh, merely about semantic. This is what we talked about uh, la la last week, and this is all about that. Uh, essentially, you have two ways uh, to produce a math environment. I mean. Uh, place where uh, characters will be interpreted as math. So you can use this dollar sign here, <laughs> and it will produce something, so some math in line. This is uh, just in the text. Or you can use this uh, escape square brackets, like that, and uh, it will produce some outline equi uh, equation. So you see, here it was supposed to be on the same line. In fact, it produced a new paragraph. It's centered, and then it produced the mathematics. Um, OK, so you can see this is not very difficult. Um, two basic commands you will use are the underscore here and um, the, um, the, so in the second plex. Uh, so one is used to underscript things and the other to uh, upper script things, OK? And the frac is used for fractions, OK? That's quite easy to understand. Another way to, uh, talk, to put this environment, you have another syntax, in fact. You can put uh, this uh, escaped parenthesis for uh, inline math, all these double dollars are I strong, strongly recommend you to use this one because this, this is the, sen the standard way to do it. There is no problem with the escape parenthesis, which sometimes may be good if you're not good at seeing where a math uh, starts, where it ends, or if you have any problem with that. But the second one is uh, not recommended because not supported. It may disappear. But you can see it sometimes in documents. So it's important to understand what, why it's here. OK, the main, um, you have two packages that have uh, extended uh, the capabilities of uh, LaTeX. 
And I will suppose that uh, both both extensions are uh, are um, used in uh, your documents uh, because uh, there is no reason that you don't want to use it. Okay. So the first one is uh, AMS Math. It was it was produced by the American Mathematical Society. And the second one is the Math Tools package, which is just uh, uh, some authors that produced this uh, a million uh, the, um, this um, this um, the, this package to enhance the capabilities of uh, AMS Math. It is it's uh, the same basis. Okay. This is what we want to produce. Okay. So three equations. Um, this is a bit vertically compressed. This is just to fit on the screen, but this is not exactly what you want to produce. The first one about uh, the, the, I think, the definition of the limit. Maybe I'm, it's wrong. It's just for example, and um, then about summation. Then we'll see why this example are relevant. Okay, and then an integration at the end. Okay, so for the first one, the limit. First, very easy example, we just put this function. Okay, so that's something we know how to do. Then we have a comment, because uh, I look on the internet how to produce uh, a right uh, arrow, and the answer is right arrow. Okay, this is not very difficult. So, I write this. But now I need to produce something uh, under my uh, arrow. This is this uh, x toward p, OK, just here. So uh, maybe I, I've seen on some forums that I can use under set to produce something under another, another thing. So I try it. So the first argument is what is under. And the second is what is uh, modified by uh, the the under set common. This is not bad, but not good. The the arrow is too uh, um, narrow, in fact. So it, we have seen through the um, AMS documentation that we can use x right arrow, which is extendable right arrow. This is why there is an x. So this extendable right arrows uh, produce a right arrow where you can put something in the square brackets, which will be under, and something in the uh, curly braces, which, uh, which will be uh, over the arrow. Here we don't need anything over, but something under. Uh, this is a list of the arrows you may found. Uh, don't worry about the output. You may notice this is not really good. Okay, if you sit on most screen, this, this will give you this will give you this uh, strange things. You know the line is not regular. I d don't know if you can see uh, at your place, but when we, you will go through slides, you may think that is not good. In fact, when printed, it's always perfect. Okay, this is a problem of uh, uh, the viewer that are not. Uh, sufficiently good to to produce uh, something good with the with this. Okay, so you have an example. The syntax is always the same, and uh, you may see that that you have just left, right, both left, right. It's always in this order, and when you put just a uh, capital, this is doubled. Okay. You can put hook on the left, on the right, uh, to the left, or to the right and uh, maps to which can be used to define uh, functions. Plenty of other commands all have the same syntax. In fact, you can use uh, every of this uh, arrow or harpoon or hook uh, without the x, which means extend uh, ex expandable. Um, if you don't use it, you just obtain the short version. And if you replace the x with a long, you obtain the long, uh, long version, a static long version, which is not extendable, but it's quite long. OK. So here, we're here. Um, what we want next is to put a limit before. OK, so we've seen that we have an, an arrow for uh, the equivalence, which is quite cl clear. But uh, 
We're not satisfied by this because of the, the limit, which is not how it's supposed to be uh, output in good mathematic typography. It's always a Roman font to produce this, an uh, upshape font. This is not what we want. So, how to do it? In fact, for uh, many uh, classical functions, you have a command like that. Here, I just, uh, sorry, just add a backslash. This produces the limit uh, function and with right spacing after limit. If you understand before, there is quite no spacing. Uh, it's seen as the produce of L, I, M, and F. Here we have four variables we are multiplying, which is not what we want. So here you have the limit command. Okay? The syntax to put something under the limit common, yes? I say it's quite important to understand that any white space that you have inside the message is meant to the formula in this method. Right? So if you write L, I, M, uh, you know, uh, or you make spacing between L space, I space, M, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Yes, it's mostly the same as in text, uh, in standard text, we, you have uh, all these uh, supplementary spaces that are eaten by, uh, by LaTeX. And if you have done the tutorial, you've seen that we can avoid it, but this is not uh, what we want here. We want to everything to be interpreted. So L, I, M, F is seen as the product of uh, four variables, L, I, M, and F, which is not what we want. So here we can use it to produce this limit common. Um, then, to produce something under the limit, we use the underscore. It's not uh, put it here uh, between the limit and f. This is specific to all these functions, and uh, we will see that there are plenty of them. So, the common functions, so you have mo uh, most of the, the um, how do you call these functions? Um, trig trigonometric function, yes, in English also, and some logarithm, exponential, max, mean, um, and many other you can find in the, um, the LaTeX symbol this I will talk about later. So uh, all this uh, common uh, uh, can uh, have the syntax with the underscore. And you can define, if one is missing, you can define uh, another one with this de declare math operator. So the first argument is the name you want to, to for this uh, function. And the second is out, you want it to be um, output. So uh, you don't have to specify that this is a Roman font, this is object font, because this is normal, normal for a math operator, OK? So the normal case is that it produces in up shape. Then when you use it, just put the underscore or and it produces what you want. Okay, maybe it's not what you want because uh, here the, the A is not under, it's beside and um, maybe you want it under, like for limits. So uh, the idea is just to add this uh, little star. Uh, this is called the start version of the command and when you put it, it's just the behavior of uh, the limit function. Okay, so if you don't have the, the operator you want, you just define it, it's okay. Now, okay, we are here with this thing. And then we have this L, which is not the L we uh, always found here. Often we, we see this uh, or a curly uh, L with a loop like that. This is produced with a common, which is called L. Okay, why I show you that? Maybe the L was good or, or also, okay. But there are plenty of this common. You can produce whatever character you want and you may want to use in uh, um, mathematics. And uh, you will find uh, every one of this uh, character either in the compressive LaTeX symbol list, which is quite important. This is hundreds of symbols you may want to produce with LaTeX. 
the only reference uh, in this document, or if it's too big, because sometimes, okay, you take a look at the LaTeX symbol list and you don't find the character you want, but you know how to draw it. So you have this website, the Techify, which, pr which uh, you, you, you draw your character and it, um, it outputs uh, uh, a list of um, symbols that can match your drawing. So often you will find uh, quite easily what uh, you're looking for through the, all these uh, symbols uh, from uh, Greek to Hebrew or uh, special characters like for all exist or the imaginary or real part of a, num of a complex number. Um, the partial also for derivation, which is quite important here. Okay, so here we have uh, our L. Just to remind you, this is what we want to do on the end, and we have only produced the first line. Now we can't see, or oh, maybe it's time for a break. You should have remind me. Okay, so we'll see. There is no problem because, uh, in fact, I'm between two parts, so if we do a break now, it's no problem. So, pr okay. Everyone is back. So, um, as I told you, um, for as for now, we just have the 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 first part, the first line, and we want to do this little thing a bit. Uh, tricky, you know, with alignment and things like that. So uh, the first ID, if you remember well, we've seen spaces uh, during uh, the, the first lecture, uh, but uh, here I think that this will be a pain to find the right size of the spaces to just to uh, uh, align these uh, two uh, symbols. So there is other ways to do uh, it. Uh, but this is not what we've seen now. <laughs> okay, later. Uh, first, uh, I, I will just show you how to produce this because there is a lot of symbols uh, as we've seen uh, before and we'll see how to produce uh, this uh, line on the right hand side. Okay, this is quite easy, I think. You just use uh, what you will say to produce your command. So, for all epsilon strictly positive, positive, I mean, uh, exists, there exists, but exists, delta, positive, and for all x in i, so you just read what you wrote, and this is exactly what is produced here, and if you don't find the, the right symbol, you just look through the LaTeX symbol list. And what's next? Um, so an, an opting parenthesis and uh, this uh, uh, implication between the uh, two. Okay, and just this uh, vertical bar you can produce on every uh, keyboard for uh, the absolute uh, value, the positive uh, part. Okay, in fact, for uh, the epsilon, often we use this symbol and not this one. So uh, this one is the, stan the standard one in modern Greek, but often we use this one. So this is, uh, call this is called a variant. So you have just these two, uh, three letters, var, be and before. Uh, this is for variant, and you have some characters that are defined uh, with uh, variants, uh, some Greek characters. You can uh, look at this in the LaTeX symbol list. Okay, now this is time to align things. This is how you do it. You put, you start an align or environment at the beginning, then the first part, this uh, limit on the right. Then you have, I don't think, yes. Then you have this uh, ampersand here, the uh, commercial at or ampersand. Uh, which is used to uh, tell LaTeX, okay, this is uh, the, the uh, I al alignment, uh, this is tabulation, you know, this is where I want to align things. Th then you have this double 
a left right arrow and then the right patch we wrote before at the end you have this double backslash which ends the line if you remember this is the one we used also in uh, in text mode but it, this is not meant for that in text mode this is not the good way to do it but in a linear environment this is the good way you tell okay this is the end of the first part of your alignment and then you don't uh, want to put something here in the first column of your uh, align uh, environment but then at the same uh, point of the uh, line and environment you put a second uh, left right row and then this is what we wrote before and you can see that uh, default um, is that uh, a line uh, uh, numbered every line uh, of your uh, of your document. This is not what we want. So you can just use the start version which suppress all numbered. Okay? This is when you don't want to number things. Uh, we'll see later that in fact what we want is just one number for the overall because uh, here what is important is the overall equivalence, not one line of the equivalence. Okay? Then this is a bit uh, over full, you know, it's a bit too large. So we will break it at this point to produce two lines. Okay, why not use the fact that this is a line? So we break the line uh, at the right side. And then on the left uh, hand side, you have an, another li a line environment and this put it there. Okay, this is not great. In fact, we don't want to mess with this part of the equivalent which has to remain clear and uh, this part has to be just, you know, uh, most part on the right to be uh, part of the right hand side. So how to do it? We can add space, uh, but not every space. We will use this command which is called a phantom. This is to make LaTeX uh, believe that there is this character, but with no ink. With no ink, uh, it means that uh, it produces just the character, but uh, in the same color of the background of your document. Okay. So it pushes little, but we don't want uh, it to be here. Why is it here? In fact. If I add the ink, uh, the symbol is produced, but not in the same way. When you use every binary operator, like this uh, uh, a row, or like plus sign, minus signs, uh, or things like that, uh, LaTeX um, um, know how to deal with spaces. Okay, here you you can see that there is space. Uh, uh, added here, here, this is not all together. But here, when you protect the common, this is uh, some, someone isolated, so uh, LaTeX thinks that this common is used with no arguments. So, so there is no need for space. Okay? So spaces are suppressed. How to tell LaTeX there is an argument? Just put a void argument. Okay, when you put uh, grouping parentheses, this tell LaTeX, okay, there is something. You don't know what, but there is something. Okay? This can be used mostly everywhere, uh, not only in math mode, but sometimes. Just try that. Here it's pretty useful to make uh, LaTeX believe there is something, and then you can see it produce, okay, what we want. In fact, sometimes we want to add a little more space because this is not exactly in the same, um, uh, how to say that, this is not exactly this, the same level, okay? This is most part of what is, what is uh, before, okay? So maybe we just want to add uh, extra spaces. How to produce spaces in, uh, in, a, in math, math mode? Here we use this QQuad is ba based on a French word, uh, quadratin, uh, which is uh, a uh, 
kind of space. And um, this in, uh, in English, this was called quadratin, but with a QU. And uh, with double Q is double quadratin. Okay? So this is pushed by a, a big, um, big amount. And then you have this kind of space that I've added because I thought that here we might want to have little more spaces after the comma, which is not added default uh, in math mode. Okay, you can see this is little compressed, not clear. So I add these spaces with um, the uh, sem uh, yes, semicolon. Okay, this is all the mathematic spaces you can use. Phantom, this is not really a space, but this is a no ink box, so this is quite like a space. And you can use quad, quad for quadratin, double quad. Uh, this is the, the carrot, this uh, little symbol is to materialize the uh, space. There is a space after the, the um, backslash, okay? This is just what you put, you don't have to find on your keyboard this uh, symbol. Uh, the comma, the colon, the semicolon, and you have the size on the right. So this is uh, this is called a thin space, a med space, and a thick space, or big space. And the last one is negative space. Sometimes you will see that in math, we need to uh, group things a little more. So you have this negative space. So you see this is uh, here is the beginning of the of the space, and on the left, this is the end of the space. Okay, this is negative. This eats uh, space. So, this is what we get. And I, I've suppressed again the, the star because I want to uh, number uh, the, the equation, but the overall equation. I want this to be all numbered as one. This is my first equation. Okay how to do this. So here you can see there's a problem because both lines are numbered, okay? You can first uh, suppress the tag. This is called the tag, this number. So you can suppress the tag wherever you want using the note tag. Uh, I've, put, I've put the note tag command just after the left-right arrow, so this means here. In fact, you can put it everywhere on the line before the end of the line, and then it's, uh, it's used for this line. Okay, so I can put it uh, at the very beginning and everywhere then, but before this double backslash. Okay, and it suppressed the tag. But this is not what we want. We want to number the overall, not just the last line. So, uh, what we can do first is that Maybe we want to number uh, the last line, which is the result. So there is no other way than using uh, the phantom and, uh, I've used and things like that. You know, the phantom is here, is right here. And this was a little complex. You can also use the multi-lined environment. This is an improvement from uh, math tools. So if you don't use math tools, you can't use that. Uh, but I suppose you use it. And then, for math uh, tools, for multi-line, you don't need uh, uh, to align things. In fact, you just put the double uh, backslash at, at the end, and nothing at the beginning, you see? No spaces at all. What it does is uh, that the first line is on the left, the right line is on the right, and there is um, a space that is added here and here. Here you can't see it, but in fact, if the second line is shorter than the first one, this is not the case here, this is important because this uh, allows the, this uh, line to be pushed a little on the right of the first uh, line, okay? So this will deal with this indentation uh, you want uh, in your equation. Okay. Uh, here, this is not good. We don't want uh, that kind of thing, I think. You, you may want it, but it's better to have it this way. So what I've added is just this little mark, this optional argument here with a T for top. You can also use a B for bottom, which will align on the last line of your multi-line uh, uh, environment. 
Okay. And then number follows. Okay, that's good, but that's still not what we want. We don't want to number the second part of the of the equivalence. We want to number the overall. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, come back again on this, which is the standard way to do it. Uh, then you can use uh, instead of the uh, lean environment and leaned environment, wi which is uh, uh, um, not. Um, I mean, it does not start the math mode, so you can't use it alone. You have to wrap it with. Uh, the equation, equation uh, environment, which produced a single equation with a tag. So the, this is exactly what we wanted. In fact, the often you don't want it, but here this is what we want. So what are the equation environments? Because we've seen three of them, but there are plenty. When this is in green, this is optional. When this is in blue, this is because you have choice between these two options. Okay. So um, uh, each one, each one with the star, uh, there there is no number of equation without the star. There is a number. So you can align things and things like that. You go through the documentation. This is very very clear, and I think uh, this is very clear how to use it and why you want to use it, uh, this is uh, part of the name, okay? So, uh, the first one is just used for uh, alignment, we've seen it, but the, uh, f for, sorry, the second one. The third one is used for multi-alignment, if, uh, if you have, for example, two or three equations, you want side by side, but with alignment inside each of each, you might want to use this third one. And gather is just uh, when you want to group some equations that have nothing in common, just that you want them to be uh, on the page, just uh, right up and one after the other. Okay. On the left, you have the environment that start math mode and that can't be used inside another. On the right hand side, you have uh, this environment uh, that uh, can be used only inside another math uh, environment. And in between, you have uh, those that can be used both in or outside, but are mostly used inside, in fact. Okay, and in the Net Tools package, you have uh, plenty of, I think, or maybe three or four more if you want um, better control of how you align, uh, align things. Then, the second equation. So, this is quite big, but we've seen part already of this before. Let's let's start with uh, this uh, right uh, first line, right hand side. Okay, which is which seems to be the easier part because on the left hand side we have this uh, stack of argument uh, uh, underneath, which is not uh, we don't know how to deal with it, and uh, below we have. Uh, I don't know, big parentheses, but maybe it's difficult, okay, so we'll see later. First, this. Why? Uh, why it doesn't produce what it's supposed to do? Uh, so we wanted a sum that start. Uh, so this is quite the syntax of the limit command. If you remember, just we have uh, this um, um, second flex to put the things uh, up a script, okay? So the sum starts uh, at uh, i equals 1, but here well, I, I, but equals 1, and then superscript m. OK, this is because we need to group things this way. OK? So the difference is uh, I have to tell uh, LaTeX where it starts, what is uh, 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 under the sum symbols, and what is uh, over the sum symbol. OK? This is not very difficult, I think. No? Okay. Then, we have plenty of these big operators. They all work in the same way. Okay, you can put uh, something uh, at the bottom of it or uh, on the upper part of it. Uh, some I don't know how to use, but I don't know why, why a big O dot might be useful, but 
maybe people use it, mm, things like that. OK. Uh, then the left part. So first, we start with uh, things we know how to do. We write these some symbols, and we put okay things uh, side by side. Uh, and I forgot the x, y, and uh, y, j. Uh, x, i, and y, j. Okay, just here. But you, you, you can uh, understand that they they will be put here just after the n, and then the equal will come after. This is too spaced. Okay, so we want to group things. First, we'll see how we have produced this. We didn't know these symbols less or equal. This is part of the uh, LaTeX symbol list, but uh, you have plenty of these uh, um, uh, symbols, of these inequality symbols. These are the most useful, I think. Uh, for j just don't ask how to produce just one of them. Okay, just look at your keyboard and you have the answer. Um, okay, so the names are quite clear uh, when you have multiple uh, less. This is LL, or sim is for similar, uh, and starting with an N is for uh, neg uh, negations, not what is on the right side, so not greater, not less, not less or equal, not greater or equal, greater or equal, and not equal at the beginning. Okay, you have plenty of other symbols you might uh, want to look at in the LaTeX symbol list. So back to this. Uh, we want to break this in two line. Um, you are the the idea is this is very simple. You just use this sub stack symbol. We want to put it as a stack, so we have a sub stack symbol uh, command. I think uh, I mean. And to break the line, this is always the same symbol we will find everywhere in LaTeX. This is this uh, double uh, backslash, OK? So it's quite good. And I always forgot the x, i, and uh, y, j. But okay, you might see what it does. Then the second part. So we know how to align things. So I do this directly. You have the equation, the al uh, aligned environment. Then this ampersand to uh, align on the equal sign, okay. Then I put things with parentheses, okay. They don't grow as I thought they will, because often you don't want them to grow, and because LaTeX doesn't know uh, exactly what is inside parentheses. Here, this is clear for a human because we know that when we have a left par left parenthesis, uh, often this is there is a right parenthesis uh, somewhere uh, after, and what is inside is the part we want to put in parenthesis. But sometimes we have other symbols that are like parenthesis but are used solely. For example, the curly braces. Sometimes you put. Uh, things inside curly braces, but sometimes you put lines and nothing on the right. So LaTeX has to know where it starts, where it ends. So uh, we'll tell him, we can just tell him the size we want the symbol. This is sometimes useful, uh, sometimes just a problem because you have to try it to know which one is the good one. Okay. But you have this more important command, which is left and right. Uh, this helps uh, LaTeX to know where it, start, where it starts, where it ends. If the symbol is not the same on the left and on the right, this, there is no problem. OK? Here are the delimiters. These symbols you can use with left, right, or all the big uh, command we've seen before. OK, you may go through. Uh, through it. For each one of the first one, uh, you have a, a replacement command if necessary. It may be necessary. Uh, often you don't need it. In fact, in all the examples that come after, I never uh, used uh, this command, but you can uh, easily find it. And here is I the important part. This is left point and right point. This is just for balancing. For example, if you want to have um, uh, an opening parenthesis uh, alone, uh, 
uh, you have to end it and you tell LaTeX what is inside, inside this uh, opening parenthesis by telling him, okay, it starts with left parenthesis and then right point. This is, okay, this is the end. We will go, uh, we will see um, more example after. So here we use left and right to put uh, this parenthesis. Okay, that's quite good. Maybe we want a, a, a dot for the product because this is more clear. So I add the dot. This is just for the example. And uh, this is a C dot because this is centered on the line. We see that this is a line with the equal sign. Um, okay, we have a problem here. This is not the same size, so this is not beautiful. So you may think this is okay. Uh, I think this is ugly. Okay, so this is not what you will do on the first uh, writing. On the first writing, you stop here. Eh? You, okay, this is okay. You have your equation. This is perfectly clear, and all information is in it. But when you look at your document at, uh, at the end, just you know, one or two weeks before uh, uh, handing it in, uh, you might want to correct that. So we can use static size. This is the wrong uh, idea because uh, you will try uh, everything and maybe it will not uh, be good. And um, you can also use uh, the equivalent of the phantom command we've seen before with the vertical phantom. It's something that is uh, that has no uh, width, but which is vertically the size of its argument, okay? With no ink. So here, because we know the second part, the second sum is bigger. Why is bigger? It's because of the, uh, the this leg of the J, this Q, uh, these uh, little things of the of the J, which is not here and that's stretch the, the parenthesis, we put the sum with the j in the argument and vertical function. You can see that I don't put all the equation. I just need the h of the box. So I just put the sum, what is uh, under it and what is over it. And this is OK. This is the OK, but uh, if uh, I have this type of product uh, all the way long, in my document, this is not the good way to do it. In fact, I can define a new delimiter. This is something that can be put uh, around uh, anything else. This is a quite complex one. We'll see simpler one after. So this is a parenthesis product, which has two arguments. This is the two. This is what we want to put on the left. This is what we want to put on the right. Okay, this is this one and this one. Okay, I don't talk about this one for as for now. Then this is what is produced inside uh, this uh, parenthesis. This is my first argument. Here it will be the the first term. Then I have this very very useful common that allow me to produce a parenthesis that is exactly the same size of this one, or and this one, okay? Follow me. Um, so this tell uh, this is like you know this big we've seen before, or this left or this right. It change, it changes this, the 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 eight of the parentheses. But here, this is stored inside the command uh, what this mean. So this will this will be exactly the side of this one or this one, which or this one or this one. Um, then I produce the dot. I just put these empty things just to be sure that uh, they are, this is seen as arguments because I was not sure. Maybe this is not needed, but I was not sure at the moment I, write, I wrote it. Then the, this parenthesis with a, a good size and then the second argument. Okay, then how to use it? So here is the name I gave, I gave to the command, parenthesis product. And with the star, uh, this, the star is like left and right. The, uh, this tells the command to adapt to the eight. If I don't 
uh, write it. I just get the, the little version I put the first time, OK? And inside each argument, just the submission uh, um, equation. OK? Why is it useful? Here, it's maybe, you know, like a sort of hammer. Uh, big tool, but in fact you will use it. Uh, okay, this little tweak. Okay, forget about. Um, this is maybe very 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 useful. For example, for a physician that may use this bracket, uh, which is a symbol which is uh, often used, and maybe you want it to uh, have the good side. So here we declare it with three arguments: a left angle. This is this symbol on the left, right angle on the right. And in between, you have one argument. Then, uh, is, this is a, here, this is just a little space because it, it's needed to have okay, pretty printing. Then this vertical bar, then the second argument, then a vertical bar, then the third argument. And how to use it? Here, this is the, um, an equation environment. Uh, here I tell the, the side, I can uh, avoid this by putting a star, but here I didn't want because uh, there is no problem with this k, uh, which is just uh, under the line, and maybe I don't want too big um, uh, left angle, which is quite ugly. So this is just to show you that you can adapt the size. This is not uh, mandatory that you use the left-right uh, version. Okay. So this is an example. And you can use also uh, these to produce absolute value, which you can uh, already write at the beginning of uh, every uh, map document you have, because this is very important to have a command uh, to produce mathematics that carry the meaning of what you're writing and not just uh, how you want things to look. Because maybe someone will come after you and thinks that in your document there are too many vertical bars. And uh, what he wants him is to produce uh, an apps command, an apps function. I mean, he wants to write ABS, opening parenthesis, the argument, and closing parenthesis. Okay? So maybe uh, s somebody will run to keep the meaning of your equations, but not how they are typeset. So you can change things like that, OK? And this is also better when you read your document, when you proofread your document to verify that nothing is wrong, because you just read the meaning of uh, what you're writing and not how it is produced. You just, uh, as, we'd, uh, as we've done at the beginning, you just uh, read for all, etc., etc., not uh, uh, bar bar a b s bar bar a you don't understand what you're doing okay so we are over with the this uh, equation too okay now the last one which is easier i think this is the first version what is wrong with this one first there there are many things wrong but what is wrong first okay Cosinus is not good. It's supposed to be a function, not uh, a set of uh, C O S variables. Okay, so just add this uh, little bar. We are have also a problem with the G. It's not really a problem, but often you want to write it uh, with up shape form. Okay, it's a vertical D, not uh, this slanted D. Okay, so you can use this uh, math R M common to change this, the things. Uh, this is all the fonts you have access to when you use math. Um, this one is the, the bold blackboard. Uh, in fact, uh, you don't want to use it uh, if you do good uh, work, because historically, uh, all characters that now you found with a Bold blackboard were written with bold face, just with the third one, this one. Okay, but sometimes it it's needed because now we write uh, bold faced uh, the vectors, for example, 
and um, bold black uh, bold black boards for the the fields. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the real, the complex, and things like that. Okay. Uh, so this is just the package you have to use if you want these two commands. But I think uh, calligraphic writing is uh, enough. But uh, some people uh, think this is ugly and they want something more, okay, maybe uh, more fireworks, you know. <laughs> okay, then back to that. This is not good because I told you about the meaning of D. On here, this is not the meaning of D. I've changed it, and if someone comes after me and tells me, okay, no, 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 uh, me, I want the D to be slanted, not up shape. Uh, this is not what I do now. In fact, we often we use a little spacing because this entity, this differential part, is not part of uh, what is inside the, your integration, so we use this little spacing. But back to my problem with the D. We might want to define a new command. Okay, this is ex exactly the syntax I show you in the first lecture. I define here. I choose ud. Okay, this is my choice. It's an up shape d, but you might want the command that uh, uh, suits uh, shoots you. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, so then I use it uh, ud x, and it produces exactly what I want. And I include the space in it because I always want this space. And if someone comes after me and don't want it or want a bigger space, this is easy. This is use, uh, for example, at the beginning of the document, and it can change it for the old document just by changing the little definition. Okay. Uh, this is just a little trick, but I will go over it. So this is how to, you know, group a little thing. You can take a look uh, after if you're interested and ask, ask me if it's not clear how it works. Then the second part, so we put a squared root, okay, here, produces the symbol of the size we want exactly, okay, this is all automatic, so you don't care, this is just about meaning, so this is the square root of the fraction of p over 2, exactly. Okay, then I add the environment and I add my numbering. Okay, but we don't have seen everything in math. We have some things that are missing. First, we want to produce matrices. Okay, this kind of big things, and this is not included. We may want to use uh, aligned environments and things like that, but this is awful. This is not meant for, and uh, this, this will not look good. So, how to do this with arrays? This is my last part, and I will go over it. Um, so first, this is very easy. You put an A, A equal, then you start a matrix, then you know all symbols. You put the first number, you put uh, an ampersand for alignment, then minus one, and uh, ampersand, minus two. You break the line, okay, so you go from here to here, and then you continue. And this is centered uh, on the line automatically. Okay, this is quite good, but we miss parentheses. Okay, no problem. Add parentheses, we've seen how to do it. Okay, so we put this left parenthesis and the right parenthesis. But this might be a little difficult to read, and sometimes you will miss the right or uh, put something else on the right. So there is a meaning uh, a based uh, environment. This is P matrix, P for parentheses. Okay, so here it puts um, automatically the parentheses. You have plenty of this. How to use it? This is the first line. So here I put uh, A, B, C, and D uh, uh, in my uh, matrix. And uh, you can change the first letter to change how it's uh, produced. You might want to redefine it uh, yourself because you know how to do it with left, right, and things like that. Okay. So, now I add the dots. So, I, uh, this is exactly the same, we just add the, com the commands, uh, center dots and uh, vertical dots and diagonal dots. Okay, so these are the vertical dots, these are the diagonal dots, and they'll, they'll put exactly in the array, okay? 
Um, so these are the dots you have access to. These are basic level uh, dots, but but you, we want meaning-based uh, uh, dots because often if someone is, uh, does not agree with how we type such things, uh, we might want to change it uh, at an upper le uh, level. Uh, you can see the last one is pretty useful if you have a very long line and don't want these points to be separated with spaces, just a little trick. Okay. So you have semantic dots, which are ba uh, which are from uh, A and S. The dots for commas, separated list. The dots for binary operators, separated list. Uh, dots for multiplication with no, o no operators. Um, maybe uh, some are the same. This is not the case here, but th this may be. Uh, I think, see, uh, yes, maybe the second and the third one are the same here, but in uh, um, another people might want to produce uh, dots on the line for products, for example, and not uh, centered on the line, uh, centered over the line. Uh, dots for integrals, uh, okay. And you have other. Don't use other, okay. Define your own. If you have a meaning w which is not in the list, other is the bad way to do it because you will never know how this will be. Uh, output and you have no no ID and you will uh, have to go through your document to know where is the problem if this is good or not if uh, this is what you want in so add your own winning uh, let uh, I show something about it this is part of tech in fact you don't want to know exactly but uh, the idea is you can uh, this uh, this is the command you want to define. This is the command it's based on, okay? The idea is just a copy of the command, and if this one is modified by uh, anything, this is always produced the original uh, uh, meaning of the command which is here. But, okay, you don't have to understand it uh, exactly. So here you put a high-level command you want to use, for example, uh, dots for uh, I don't know, no idea, but maybe you have. No. Okay, if you want dots for, uh, uh, maybe for sums, because here we have for integrals, but we have nothing for sums. Okay, so you want something for sums. Okay, you use here an uh, S for sums, because this shoots you. And here you, you use one of the ba um, basic level, um, or the low level commons we've seen before. Okay? Okay, uh, in fact, matrices are uh, a special case of more general uh, array. Okay, what is this? What we know? We know the left and the right. You see here the use of the dot. Never mind what is uh, inside, this produces this, but the left we have these curly braces, and the right we have nothing but we want LaTeX to know that this starts here and ends here even if there is no thing to produce, okay? And in between, uh, we have the syntax is more or less the same as for mat matrices, but we just have these uh, arguments. This is how to define the columns, okay? So in order, you have a, ri a right lean columns for the air, then a centered columns for the equals and the vertical dots. I want to be a lean. And uh, then uh, left align uh, uh, column. Okay? This is just using one letter to define one column. Uh, any, any question about that? This is important for what's coming after, so if you don't understand, stop me. Then we will use it to produce cases. Okay? Sometimes we want to define things uh, piecewise. Okay? So I use the left right uh, trick. Okay, this is okay. I start an array. I want the first part to be uh, okay. This is maybe not on the right. I think it's better on the left. I don't know why I put it, but I can change it. Okay, and uh, then uh, the two functions that define it and with the ampersand. What's come after? Okay, we have a problem here with the when and otherwise, which is text. So, the first solution is to add 
a text command that allows to put text inside mathematics. You can put text everywhere in mathematics using uh, this command or any of the text, SC text, RM text, IT, I've shown you uh, uh, in the first uh, um, lecture. Okay? Every formatting command uh, starting with text is allowed in a math model and will uh, change back to, to text mode just to typeset what uh, you want uh, in between. So here are the when and the other ones. Okay, but this is not very, uh, I mean, very easy to use. So we have better, we have meaning oriented uh, uh, environment, which is called D cases. In fact, the D is optional. This is for display cases. Um, display cases displays the difference between an inline equation and an outline equation. Uh, you, may you may want to try to put a, a, a summation symbol in, uh, in um, uh, inline mathematics, and you will see that this is uh, smaller than the one that is uh, on an outlined uh, equation. Okay? So uh, the second one is called a display style, the, uh, the first one, no. So here's the, if you don't put it, the m m uh, mathematics here are written in, uh, in not display style. This one, sometimes this is a little compressed. Here, you can often use the D cases and don't uh, uh, bother about uh, what it will produce. Okay, so if you don't understand, just uh, copy what is on the border and this is okay. And you see that the second column here default to text, okay? It defaults to text. So then I just put an inline environment for mathematics just for this part. But sometimes you don't need mathematics on the right. This is often uh, if something or when something or, okay. So, and now this arrays, we may want to use uh, arrays and tabular outside math uh, environments. So um, we will uh, we'll, we'll see how to do it. We use, in fact, a tabular environment. So we'll see what we recognize, what we don't recognize. I will see you before what it produces. Um, but you can see that uh, first, please use the package array. This is not mandatory to produce a uh, tabular, uh, but this will produce better tabular, better arrays, so just use it. This is like math tools or things like that, okay? This is our improvements uh, that are not in the core of LaTeX because not everyone will use mathematics or tabular, so we don't want to have a big core of LaTeX which will take hours to compile, so this is light. Sometimes this is not so good, so you just want to use uh, this package, but it works without it. Okay, so now go through, go through that. So it will produce this environment. Um, first, we have new column type. Okay, we don't know exactly what it is, but let's start with this line. This is something we, we recognize. We have uh, the name of the environment, then an argument that ends here, uh, it helps you with if you have syntax coloration of your editor, it's better. You can see uh, where it ends. And then you have, you know, this uh, uh, element part, so it's quite classic. So we'll go through it. First, we recognize this little L. Okay, this is the second column that is uh, a line uh, on the left. Okay, fruit, apple, banana, pear, pineapple. Okay, maybe it's fruit, sorry. Um, okay, what we have this big L, big R, big L. Ah, okay, this is, we recognize this is something that uh, uh, might be, uh, yes, I know, <laughs> uh, like uh, the little R, uh, L, R, uh, C, or things like that. In fine, we've just defined it over. Yeah, and how did we define it? 
we we use this, this little uh, uh, rows the, uh, here on the left and the right, which means th this column type big R is an R, but at the beginning I insert. This is the meaning. At the beginning I insert a dollar, and at the end I insert a dollar. So do you see that this column type will be in fact the same as this one, but in math mode. So we can type math in this column, in this column, and this in this column. So we have four columns, three of them are in math mode. This is for numbers, for example, here or here. Okay? So now you see left, left, right, left. We have exactly uh, left, left, right. Okay, this is up to the commas and left. Then I speed a little. This is to, yeah, there are many things in this slide. This is to show you uh, how much you can do with tabular, but you, you may not need everything. Then, what is the rest of the line? We have vertical bar, this exclamation mark, and this at uh, symbol. Okay, this is just to tell LaTeX what is uh, between the columns. So a vertical bar is just a line. This is the first vertical line. Uh, an exclamation mark is uh, uh, something. It outputs between columns exactly what is uh, inside it arg its uh, argument. And um, it uh, keeps the spaces between the, the line and the separator, OK? So you have exactly the, the symbol, but with spaces. The difference is when you use at, you don't have any space. So if you want, you will need to, to add it. But here, ex it's exactly what you want. We want a comma between uh, uh, two, uh, the, uh, between the integer part and the fractional part. OK, here we have uh, something very interesting, uh, which is called a uh, multicolumn, because here is in, uh, in integra integer part, is fractional part, but the title price or prices uh, is for both columns, not just for one of them. So I want the title to be on, the, on both the two columns. So I just use multicolumn, which, can we, which is uh, the, uh, the argument here we will, will be spanned over two columns and will, will, will be produced centered. In fact, here you can put exactly everything that you uh, can put here, except that you can just define one column, okay? Can't define three or four columns inside, I think, if I remember well, but test it if you, if you uh, can't, uh, if you don't know. Okay, so this produces the price centered uh, over the two columns se separated by the comma. Okay? So, it's over for today. Next time we will see how to produce colors in text and uh, everywhere, uh, uh, even in tabulars. Uh, we'll see how to import pictures. If you have, uh, I don't know, uh, pictures somewhere, you can put it uh, in your PDF and where you will put it. And how to draw pictures with LaTeX or with